Chuck, I do a lot of, a fair amount of reading of history. I, I love looking at how we used to think about things mm -hmm. and how the advance of science and technology uh, modifies, improves, supplants whole words, whole concepts that just become obsolete. Yeah. L like, I think our parents might have been the generation that might have still called the refrigerator an icebox. Which, because it was an actual icebox at a one point. literal icebox. Uh, you know, the ice man would come. In fact, my mother- Get your ice here! Mm -hmm. Ice cold ice. <laughs> is that how cold it is? It's <laughs> ice cold. <laughs> and so, Chuck, uh, where was the the space within the box where they put the ice? Uh, hopefully up top since up cold top. air falls. Exactly. Cold air falls. Chuck, you, you're thermodynamically fluent. I love you, man. <laughs> okay. And it would have a mechanism where it melted and you'd replace the pan at the bottom right. where, where the water melted. Okay. Uh, so uh, then we have then we don't need ice for it anymore because we perfect refrigerators and it, it orphans some people's vocabulary and but that's fine I don't think anyone under sixty calls it an ice box anymore so I the, I'm, I, I I find that fun to track yeah. vocabulary the, the evolution of vocabulary in the face of the progress of science and technology you, you so, just reminded me of my great grandmother and I'm just having a fond memory right now because she lived until I was 30 and she was born in 1901 and used to routinely tell me about the Iceman and the Fishmonger and the Milkman that all these people came around and by the way, on horse-drawn carriage. So that's the stuff you didn't get from the market. Right, Somebody right. came by and right. you got it outside your door. Especially since it was perishable or would, or would melt, right? It exactly. Was, they couldn't just leave it at the market hoping you'd come by and get it, right? Exactly. Right, right. So, so we go from horses, which, you know, we built civilization on the back of horses. We also fought wars on the back of horses. And they right. never got a thank you. They never got it. <laughs> no, there's some <laughs> horse memorials in the world. Get out! To, to the war horses, yes. Uh, All I, right. spoke, I was speaking with my sister about that. Also, many a war statue are the soldiers on a horse. So um, this is the horses are a fundamental part of that. But you're right. I don't think anyone told the horses before they went to the battle that they'd be shot at. I'm pretty sure <laughs> that was not a... They, they, we did not they would get, have bucked every soldier. <laughs> uh, so we use horses up until like the car is invented, right? Right. So um, uh, Carl Benz... So it makes a really good version of an internal combustion engine, mm -hmm. and then we're off to the races. Uh, so, so then what happens to the horse? Well, the horse rapidly disappears, uh, especially from urban centers, and then basically from all of civilization, much later on farms, I think, but eventually they would be replaced with tractors. Okay. Right. So what is the power of a horse? Well, I don't know, but let's just call it one horsepower. <laughs> So now you have a car, and what does someone who rode horses all their life call a car? A horse-drawn carriage without a horse. A horseless carriage. A horseless carriage, okay? Because that's the reference frame you're using to identify. So now you say, how powerful is the engine? We don't have any way to think about the power of the engine other than in reference to horses. So car engines started getting measured in horsepower. That makes sense. Horsepower. Okay, it's so one horsepower. So then I know that's like what, like my horse. Right. Two horsepower. Hey. Oh, I, I got a pretty nice carriage going on here. Got a carriage going on. Yeah. Four horsepower. Oh, four horses. This is like Cinderella. No, it's and six horsepower is Ben Hur. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so, so there you have it. Now. So power, once we all became metrified, uh, you, you can think of it in terms of watts. So uh, one horsepower uh, equals about 750 watts. Okay. All right. And because power doesn't have to be how fast are you moving, it's what is your, the rate that you are consuming energy. Right. So okay. uh, in the old days, hair dryers would be up around that many watts. Yeah. Right? Nowadays, and and they, put it, they, they put it on the hair dryer still. Oh, oh. Well, no, watts. They don't put horsepower on a hair. No, dryer. the watts. 
Yeah, they, uh, yes, definitely put watts on it. Yeah, but I'm saying, but generally, you see horsepower on on things like that are go into motion, or in some cases, I've seen horsepower on on lawnmowers, on yes. motorcycles, yes, things that have sort of engines, because that's where the deepest roots are, traceable to when horses did that work. Right. That, that, that's all I'm saying. Okay, so now we are left with the completely absurd, completely absurd statement in NASA press releases of how many horsepower the shuttle rocket engines are. Oh, man, I love that. Okay. <laughs> oh, man, it's like soup, souped up Santa Claus. <laughs> 2,000 horses flying into the sky. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you have NASA's press releases saying, the shuttle main engine produces 37 million horsepower. Oh my God. Okay. okay that's, and, that and is so you say that's powerful, but it is completely meaningless. Right. Because, because there are not 37 million horses anywhere. <laughs> you will not find 37 million horses probably on Earth. <laughs> So, Let alone all together, just uh, hanging out. All the heck at Kennedy Space Center. <laughs> right, right, exactly. So now, let's just say you could strap them together. Right. No matter how clever is your strapping, your 37 million horsepower is not going to, if it's actually made of horses, it's not going to put you into orbit. <laughs> no. <laughs> right. The horses are not going to ascend from Earth and go into orbit around Earth. However, it is kind of cool to start every space mission with five, four, three, two. Yeah! <laughs> Gentlemen, start your horses. Exactly. <laughs> so we, we didn't have a term that comes to us from cars that we either then apply to, apply to rockets. It would have been nice if we had car power. Right. Right, leave horses behind. Now we have car. So what's car power? Let's say 100 horsepower is now one car power, let's say. All right, then we could talk about rockets and car power. If we're going to be one generation behind, I would have been okay with that. But no, they kept referencing horses, which I personally, I think is completely absurd. And like I say now, since horsepower is just a matter of power, and so are watts, and we all, in the USA, we're all watt fluent, all right? Um, we could just use watts, kilowatts, that sort of thing. Okay. There was a similar challenge when we detonated the first atomic bomb. Yeah. Right. So is there a unit of energy to talk about atomic bombs? No, because no one ever made one before. So let me guess. We now use... Exploding horses. No. <laughs> no. So, so we look back and said, what is the biz, biggest explosion that we had before? It's oh, dynamite. A stick of dynamite. Okay. And dynamite is TNT. And TNT, by the way, discovered by Alfred Nobel, got quite wealthy on it from it and then created a fund to reward... Uh, science and peaceful applications of it, especially with regard to medicine. So, so TNT, a stick of TNT dynamite, was is the biggest explosion we had. So now we have an even bigger explosion. And so atomic bombs were measured with respect to how many tons of TNT it would be. Wow. Okay. So the two bombs dropped in Japan in warfare by the United States. Each of those was between 10 and 20 kilotons of TNT. 10, go on. 10, 20,000 tons. Tons. Kilotons, okay? That's crazy. So that's a fission bomb that takes uranium and plutonium, big atoms, splits them into right. two lighter atoms. But those two lighter atoms, when you add them back, you don't get to the original atom. There's extra energy that got converted into the bomb, okay? That's it. All right, so we would develop an even more potent nuclear weapon called the hydrogen bomb, which comes from fusing hydrogen atoms together to make helium. So you take four hydrogen atoms, you get a helium atom, and 
you had you started out with more mass than you ended up. Where did the mass go? Became energy. Energy. E equals MC squared. All right. Wow. So mild hydrogen bombs are a thousand times more powerful than your atom bombs. Wow. So we don't speak of them in terms of kilotons. We speak of them in terms of megatons. Nice. 10 megatons, 50 megatons. Mega as in, as in million. Right. Okay. So once again, we have these devastatingly powerful weapons uh, and we're referencing their power by something Alfred Nobel invented a century earlier. Wow. And so to me, that's the same as, well, I mean, not identically the same, but it's, it's, it's linguistically the same as calling as, a refrigerator an icebox. Right. And talking about the power of your car in horsepower. In horsepower. horsepower. Right. Right. And we're still so, there. It's still measured in megatons. It's still measured in megatons. Is there yeah. anything bigger than a hydrogen bomb? Um, not that, well, a supernova is, is pretty big, but we, we just measure those in, in ergs with a power, very high power. Yeah, we stopped finding words for it. <laughs> we just said, let's just go back to any any unit of energy and stick in the high. stick it there. Stick it there. That's it. Right, right. We're not we're not we're not measuring supernova in terms of horsepower or or, or, or TNT or, or TNT. Right, right, right. This is not this is not happening. Uh, you know what would be good if we measured it? This would blend pop culture with science. If we measured it in Death Star power. Yes. The power it takes to completely obliterate a planet. We, planet. Can, cal we can calculate what that is. Oh my yeah. gosh. And then our hydrogen bombs would be, it's only one millionth a Death Star. Oh, right? that's, that, that's pretty funny. <laughs> and then it becomes small rather than large. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, you can calculate exactly how much energy it takes to completely obliterate a planet. Right. And by the way, in Star Wars, The Force Awakens, where they have the new and improved Death Star, they can kill yes. all the planets of an all entire solar system. Right. And you know where it got its energy from? Where? Okay, it sucks the energy out of a nearby star. Oh, the star. Right. Okay, so it goes to a star, sucks out all the energy, contains it, and then dishes it out and can take out a whole solar system all at once. So that's badass, right? That is pretty badass. Except if you actually add up all the energy of a star, it could kill a thousand planets, not just ten. Oh, wow. So they didn't do their math. Because had really they, didn't. then the, the, dark, the dark force, the dark side would have been way more powerful than anything portrayed in that movie. You know what? We should do a show, and I don't want to offend anybody because I'm a huge Star Wars fan, but over the years, I've heard you say many, many things get me that Star Wars gets- Hold and me back. That they get it and that, that they get totally wrong. We should do a show called Star Wars is Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no, we should. It'd be awesome. I mean, it doesn't mean that we don't like it. It just means like, look, here's all the bad science that you find in Star Wars. You mean like, like BB-8 is a smooth, rolling, metal, spherical ball. Right. And somehow it's not sliding uncontrollably on, on sand. Um, and, or not only sand, but on waxed floors like a bowling ball. <laughs> Dude, that'll be a great show. Right, Star we'll Wars is stupid. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> how, to, how to cut your viewership in half. Right? <laughs> All right, so there you, there you have it. Just sort of orphaned vocabulary yeah. as, as time moves on. And yeah, it's just how culture embraces it or not. And it's what pretty we cool. still want to think about it. All right. Once well, again, good stuff. Good stuff, Chuck. Always good to have you there. Neil deGrasse Tyson for Star Talk. Keep looking up.